Hello, and welcome to our seminar on addressing forward air correction challenges on your 400G device. My name is Steve Siegel. I am the 400G, 800G solution specialist here at Keysight Technologies. Okay, when discussing the challenges brought about by forward air correction in these uh, links in the data center, it's important to keep in mind the differences by uh, the challenges brought about by FEC per se versus those brought about by the shift in modulation scheme to PAM4, because both of those happened at the same time. Remember, PAM4 doesn't run air free, so therefore we need FEX, and both of those really happened with the start of the 400G class standards at the same time, but each one of those has its own set of challenges and artifacts associated with it. Okay, in this section, we're gonna start out by talking about the implications of forward air correction on output measurements or the traditional TX measurements from the transmitter. Okay, when looking at output or transmitter measurements, there really are not major implications uh, placed on those measurements by the inclusion of forward air correction in the data. And the reason is because forward air correction itself is a coding mechanism. It doesn't change the physical analog attributes of the waveform that's transmitting the serial data, like transmitter de-emphasis, for example, would do. So therefore, the measurement really can, is unaffected whether or not uh, the serial data is present or not. Now, one thing you do need to note is the fact that PAM4 is being used. That does require additional measurements that we didn't need to use when we're dealing with NRZ. But again, this doesn't have anything to do with the use of forward error correction. But there is one important caveat that we do need to keep in mind. It is very important with these uh, transmitter measurements, and it has to do with the reference receiver. So as we saw in the earlier slides with the tight link margins that we have right now, we're putting uh, very complex equalizers in the receivers, and these need to be implemented in the reference receiver, which is used in, as signal conditioning in the uh, measurement instrument, in this case, the sampling oscilloscope, to make all of these TX measurements. And because we are doing, we have filters in these tuned filters, you know, we have a CTLE, and we have the equivalent of a uh, feedforward equalizer, these functions are implementing filter functions that need to be precisely implemented in order to have accurate and repeatable measurements. Measurements. And the only way you can do that in a sampling scope is to pattern lock the data. And so pattern locking the data has a requirement that there is a maximum pattern length uh, size that we can lock to with a sampling scope. And depending on the instrument, it's either 10 to the 15 or 10 to the 16 symbols. So the pattern has to repeat, uh, has to be shorter than that length in order for the pattern lock to work. And again, pattern lock is necessary to implement the precision filtering necessary to do the, the reference receipt. Now, quite often, this is going to preclude the use of making measurements on data that is encoded with uh, forward air correction because the uh, scrambling process alone is such, such a long uh, change in the pattern and the pattern length that we're not going to see that repetition. We're not going to be able to use the pattern lock feature. So that is the limitation for uh, using forward air correction with the TX measurements. In some cases, it's not possible when a reference receiver is necessary to make the measurement.